India is an intoxicating mix of art, history and culture. No matter the direction you head in, you're bound to find something new, something uh, unseen, something you haven't heard of before. And even in our years of exploring, we keep stumbling upon such places every now and then. And one such place is this one. We're in Orcha in Madhya Pradesh. This is a centuries-old town which almost feels like it's frozen in time with its centuries-old forts, temples and just the general structures scattered all over the place. And before we dive deep into the history books, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and please don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you get notified every time one of our travel stories goes up on auto today. Just over 100 kilometers from Gwalior and a stone's throw away from Jhansi, lies a town that you may have heard of but one that might have missed the cut on your list of places to visit. No amount of browsing images on the internet can prepare you for the sheer magnitude of history every square meter of Orcha throws at you. Around 7 hours and 480 kilometers from Delhi, having put the Neos Turbo's 100 horses to good use along the highways, we found ourselves driving through a narrow centuries-old gateway or whatever's left of it into Orcha Street before being greeted by a smorgasbord of age-old architecture replacing the modern-day landscape of a busy little town. Established in 1531 by the Bundela Rajput chief Rudra Pratap Singh, Orcha was the capital of the state of the same name. He laid the foundation of the Raja Mahal in the same year, which is one of the two palaces of the Orcha fort complex. The completion of its construction was overseen by Rudra Pratap Singh's eldest son, Bharati Chandra, with his younger brother and successor Madhukar Shah carrying out some alterations and adding final touches. In the 1570s, Madhukar Shah relinquished the reins of Orcha to the Mughals, continuing on as a ruler of the state, albeit under the Mughal Empire. Veer Singh Dev, who came into power in 1605 as Mughal Emperor Jahangir's vassal, commissioned the construction of Jahangir Mahal, the second of the two aforementioned palaces in its namesake's honour. Mesmerizing in its architecture and intricate detailing, it isn't difficult to get lost in here admiring the palace's beauty. One of Orcha's biggest draws, rather unsurprisingly, is the Ram Raja Temple. Located across the street from the Orcha fort, the structure was originally part of the Raja Mahal but was later converted into a temple for Hindu god Ram. The then queen and wife of Madhukar Shah, an ardent devotee of Lord Ram, expressed a desire to establish a temple for him and to fulfill her wish, the Chaturbhuj temple was commissioned. Having secured an idol of Lord Ram from Ayodhya, the queen returned but the temple was still unfinished, so the queen placed the idol in her palace. It is said that Ram travelled with the Queen on the condition that he will not move from the first place she seats him. Hence, the idol could not be moved to the Chaturbhuj temple upon its completion and this part of the palace was converted into a temple instead. According to this legend, Lord Ram also said that he will be worshipped as the King of Orcha and hence, the Ram Raja temple is the only shrine in the country where Ram is worshipped as a king. He is still considered the King of Orcha with the local police even giving his idol a guard of honour every day. While the Ram Raja temple attracts the majority of visitors, primarily devotees, to Orcha, it's the Chaturbhuj temple located right next to it that those fascinated by centuries-old architecture will find way more appealing. Imposing in its stature, the Chaturbhuj temple's 344-foot tall Vimana is amongst the tallest for a temple in India. And once you're done taking in all the historical monuments, the architecture of the place, once you're done admiring all that, you can always just walk down to the Betwa River, sit by the side, take in the natural beauty of the place and relax. For us, the best part about exploring Orcha is just how accessible most of its centuries-old structures are in the sense that one can literally drive up to them. Finding motorable trails within the Orcha fort complex isn't tough at all as we simply drove along some, chancing upon remnants of the days gone by. Numerous chhatris or cenotaphs dot the landscape of Orcha including the ones you see on your screens here along the bank of the Betwa river. In all, 15 cenotaphs in honour of Bundela kings and members of their clan are located on the southern bank of the Betwa river. With only grassy landscapes, 
the Betwa River and age-old construction for company, it genuinely felt like we'd managed to transport ourselves back in time. Orcha managed to arrest our attention in a way not many places in the past have been able to. Stay tuned for more episodes of the Magnificent India series and give us a thumbs up if you like this video. Drop your comments in the section below and do remember to share and subscribe.